Hi, I'm Lois Vogel Sharp. I'm doing the Fruits of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22. This one is self-control. <laughs> this one I have to laugh at sometimes. The Holy Spirit's self-control. So if you go out of control, you're in your flesh. That's simple. If you're discussing something about the Bible with somebody and you get so angry at them that you start calling them names and you get nasty, you are not in the spirit of God. You're out of control because he's self-control. He's always in control. Always. When God sends his judgment on the earth, he's going to be in complete self-control. Learned years ago when raising children that they tell you never to discipline your children with anger. Never do it when you're angry. We should always be in self-control when we're disciplining anybody or showing them a truth about something. When you're yelling at your child and screaming at your child for something they've done wrong because they've ticked you off, you're not as effective as if you do it in a manner of teaching with self-control. Because the child will just get angry at your anger and react to you. So it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Years ago, I got angry at my, one of my kids. They did something. I was really, really ticked off about it. And I said something I shouldn't have said to them. This was many, many years ago. Before I was even walking in the spirit. The way I should have been anyway. I guess I was, I don't even remember. If I was a Christian or not, I don't remember. I must have been at the time, but I was a new, I was a new Christian. And I said, I, I called him a little curse word. I said, you little something. And I, I, I said it in such a rage. I kind of was like not in control. And he was little. And he answered me back and said the same thing back to me. <laughs> and when he said it, I was like, wow, that didn't work very well, Lois. And I realized out of control, he just responded back with the same thing. He didn't know. He was a baby. He was little. I never did it again. I never used a curse word at my kid again, ever. Because I realized it doesn't get you anywhere. How many of us are cursing at our children? Calling them names because we get so annoyed. That's a terrible, terrible thing. Because it doesn't work. It just makes them get disturbed and then they'll start cursing back. I, I did daycare for years. You know how many little kids cursed in my daycare? Where'd they get it from? The parents. You can't learn a curse word unless you're either learning it from school or your parents. And these were kids that were in school. So they definitely were getting it from their parents. So I had to deal with it in daycare and tell them, no, we don't, talk, we don't say those words. So self-control is real important, especially in the body of Christ, because we have to have self-control with each other, even when we get annoyed at each other, even when we don't like what we do, even when we disagree with each other. Ranting and raving at each other, calling each other names and freaking out about it because we don't agree with each other and we don't understand why this, why that. And screaming to God. And I mean, I've been there, done that. Believe me when I tell you. I've gotten extremely frustrated in my walk with God over the 45 years now. And I've yelled at the top of my lungs with all that I was. Why, God? Why is this happening to me, God? Where are you, God? I'm sure some of you can relate to me. But it didn't get me anywhere. Because after I did it, I still didn't get an answer. <clears throat> when you approach God, and you're really not understanding, and you're just really extremely upset in your circumstances, and why is this happening to me? Go to him and talk to him. Talk to him and reason with him. Let us reason together. That's what I do now. Father, let us reason together. This is my circumstance and I don't understand why. And what can I do about it? Show me what to do. And the Spirit will lead you. He'll nudge you. He'll show you what to do about your circumstance. And sometimes it's just a matter of being patient in your circumstance. If you're patient, you won't lose your self-control. Because you'll go through that whole long-suffering thing. You'll realize, well, I just have to wait this out. It's that simple. Sometimes things take time to work themselves out. Sometimes we're in situations we just don't get it. We just don't understand. 
It's just the way it is in this world. So, self-control, ask the Holy Spirit because he'll give it to you. And you won't find yourself screaming and yelling and going crazy. Even when we preach sometimes, we can get so frustrated in trying to get our message out that we tend to go into the flesh a little bit. When in reality, we really don't have to. Because you can scream at the devil at the top of your lungs and he's still not going to leave. Listen to what I just said there. You can scream at a demon or the devil and tell him to go away as loud as you can till your voice is hoarse. Till you've exhausted yourself. And that's not going to make him go away. There's only one thing going to make him go away. The name of Jesus. The power of the blood. All you have to do is say it. Jesus. Leave me in the name of Jesus. Quiet, simple. It's the power in the name that makes things happen. Not how you scream it out. I had a woman in church years ago one day. She came, she jumped up, and she thought she was being moved by the Spirit to pray over me. And she wasn't. And I kind of got a witness to it, but I loved her very dearly. And I figured, all right, let her pray. My mistake right there. My big mistake. So she comes over, she gets in front of me, and she puts her hands on me, and she's praying now for me to get, I guess I was not feeling well or something. I don't remember what it was. And she's rebuking the devil in the name of Jesus. And she's screaming, get away from her. And she pushes me. And she pushed me back, actually. And my couch was behind me, so I sat down on my couch. Well, I felt so assaulted. I said, I can't believe how I feel right now with what she just did to me. She was totally out of control. She was out of self-control. And she thought she was in the spirit. She was so in the flesh. And I didn't say anything at that point in time. But for the rest of the afternoon, I felt so assaulted in my being that I had to call her up and explain to her what she had done. And she apologized and everything was fine. But I couldn't believe it. We can think we're in the spirit and we're not. Just because we want something to happen or we, we want to help somebody and we, we're trying to make things happen. It doesn't work by trying. It only works by the power of God moving through you. And he will do it when he does it. So self-control, use it. You don't have to scream and yell. Just let the message get out there. It doesn't mean we don't get passionate because we have passion. And we preach with passion at times. I know you've heard my preachings and the way I talk. I get very passionate. Because you're getting moved and you get moved in your own spirit and soul. So you do get passionate. But make sure that we don't get crazy out of it. You know, totally like out of control. Because this woman was out of control. We don't need, I, I've seen this happen too in the spirit. I've seen people pray over someone and they push them. I don't have to push somebody in the flesh. If they're going to go out in the spirit, they'll go out. Believe me, you don't even have to go near them. We get, in the, we get in our own frenzy of things. And that's where the spirit has to come in to show us, no, 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 no. Let me do it. Because he's the one that has to do it. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen anyway. How many of us are petitioning God out of our own frustrations, out of our own wanting for things to happen, and nothing's happening, or is it? How many, how many times have you been praying about a situation that still hasn't changed yet? Let's take a step back and make sure you're not in your flesh doing it. Let the Holy Spirit take over. He's the one that's got to take us over to do what has to be done. That's why the speaking in tongues and praying in tongues is when he's doing it. Because the Bible says we don't even know what to pray sometimes for situations. Because we don't know it all. We don't have it all together. So, self-control, very important. That's one of, the spirit, one of the fruits of the Spirit. So, Lois Vogel Sharp, have a great day. And you can catch me on kingofgloryonline.org too. Um, we have a lot of stuff on the website you might be interested in. There's different stories that uh, the Spirit gave me called, called Think About It. And they're true stories, most of them. A lot of teachings on there. We... 
the website gets updated all the time. My husband's working on it and updating, putting different things on it. So there's a lot of interesting stuff in the, on there. And um, that's about it. Have a great day.